Welcome to our January 22nd, 2014 meeting, business meeting of Richmond Community Schools Board of School Trustees. Please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> We certainly hope everyone is uh, staying warm these days <laughs> and uh, looking forward to more cold and more snow, I hear. <laughs> We're going to start here this evening with our uh, mission statement, please. Mm -hmm. Richmond Community Schools mission to graduate students who are literate, responsible, proficient in state and national standards, and college and career ready. Thank you, Susie. And now our vision statement. By 2020, Richmond Community Schools will be the highest performing school system in East Central Indiana. Thank you, Kelly. And now it's time for our public commentary. We have two um, times set aside at each of our meetings for our public commentary. And um, do we have anyone signed up? No, we don't. Or anyone from the audience wishing to speak tonight? Seeing none, we will just move right along here. We're ready to celebrate the joy of learning. First of all, we'd like to um, celebrate Dr. Borf. Uh, he is in Virginia, so I'm substituting for him. Uh, he is being uh, part of a panel and being recognized for Richmond Community Schools and our partnership with uh, communities and schools. And uh, wish him the best and uh, representing our school corporation. The first um, celebration this evening is a special teacher recognition. And um, I don't know for those out there if you've been following uh, in the news, but we've had um, quite a good year in representation for Richmond Community Schools. Um, Denise Selm was uh, made it to the final two, I believe, for Indiana teacher uh, of the year as a finalist. So uh, if Denise would come forward as well as Mrs. Wolpe, uh, I'd like to kind of talk about what happened over in Indianapolis <coughs> for that celebration. Good evening and thank you for having us uh, present Denise to the board tonight. I cannot tell you how exciting it is, not only for Richmond High School, but for Richmond Community Schools and our entire community uh, to have a teacher of Denise's caliber uh, be named to the top two in the state of Indiana. Uh, I'm gonna let Rusty Hensley, who is our Director of Career Ed and works very closely with Denise uh, in her programs, uh, tell you a little bit about Denise tonight. Thank you, Ms. Wolpe. Uh, good evening. Um, thank you for the opportunity to come this evening. As uh, many of you know, I want to start the slides and back over. As many of you know, obviously, Denise was our Teacher of the Year. We had the opportunity just a couple weeks ago, uh, uh, Ms. Robinson, myself, uh, Dr. Bohr, Ms. Wolpe, some of her family members, we were able to go up for the Teacher of the Year banquet in Indianapolis. Uh, it was an extremely good time, had a lot of people there and a lot of recognition. Um, uh, it was a good opportunity for all of us. Over the past few years, um, Denise and I have now worked together a few years, 12 or 13, and uh, we've, I've been able to see a lot of different things take place in her classroom as, as well as throughout the United States as well with Business Professionals of America. As you've seen on a couple of the slides, Denise is also active uh, here in town with the uh, Delta Kappa uh, Gamma Newsletter. She, <laughs> she takes part, not only does she use her business skills here at school with our students, she uses them in her personal life as well and produces the newsletter for them each month. Uh, Denise has been heavily involved, her and Mrs. Witham and Mrs. Runnels and Mrs. Isom, and as you well know, coming to you every year with Business Professionals of America. They've had an opportunity to take our students all over the United States. They've been to Florida, California, Chicago. Luckily this year, the Nationals are in Indianapolis. So for the first time, I'll get to go see us at the Nationals. I, I always get to go see us at State, but I've never had the opportunity to go to Nationals. So 
they've done a tremendous job. Uh, Denise has led, led that. They have to do lots of fundraising and different, different things there to make that happen. Just last week, and may I add too, that we had 25 students uh, qualify for state this year uh, when they went and competed at the regionals. Um, a few years ago, in a uh, partnership with IU East, Denise also had the opportunity to go to South um, Africa uh, into uh, Cape Town, her and Tim Scales from IU East and Mrs. Runnels, and they had uh, the opportunity to teach the BOSS program to students there. So not only are we doing it here, we're also doing it through, uh, throughout the world with them. So at this time, I would like to once again congratulate Denise uh, as our Teacher of the Year and second uh, in the state of Indiana. Thank you so much. Um, this has been an amazing experience. A um, lot of people that I could thank, but, and I will. <laughs> but um, just being able to have this opportunity, I've been very fortunate to um, have the support of the board, um, administration, fellow teachers, students. And um, if I have a request, uh, it's been great because usually <laughs> I can get that so I appreciate the support with technology because that's a lot what drives my classroom every day and and um, and I'll continue to do that <laughs> with more requests probably to make sure that my <laughs> students <laughs> are up to date with everything that, and all the changes but again I can't do that without without the support of um, everybody involved and particularly I'd really um, like to to thank Dixie Robinson um, teacher, my eighth grade Dennis middle school teacher, and, <laughs> and has been uh, um, just my mentor. My first year teaching here at, at Richmond Community Schools, um, she was my mentor, and I met with her on a weekly basis through IU East and visited her classroom at that time, and uh, she's just really supported me and helped me and really helped me through this process. Um, it was, it was a long process, but very much worth it. And um, I, I feel very blessed uh, to be in a situation. I hope to continue teaching at Richmond High School for years to come. And um, very um, proud of the students. They work really hard. And that helps us too with our programs. We've got some wonderful, I've been so fortunate to work with some awesome students. Um, that uh, that I still have contact with from the last 13 years, and so I'm I'm uh, very excited to have again that opportunity, and I thank thank everybody for that. Thank you. Any questions? <laughs> Just thank you, and you have um, you've certainly made us proud, and um, and brought much pride to not only our school system but our community. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Well, and to, to continue, how did we do Saturday? <laughs> we, uh, the kids were awesome. As always, a great representation um, for Richmond High School and the community. Um, again, we qualified 25 students uh, for state, um, which is the same number we had. We had some new contests. Um, I had some students that are in uh, digital media production. We have, that's a new one for us, broadcast news. Um, we also had some C++, uh, Java programming, um, HTML. So we're starting to get into some other types of competitions, and we've had students they qualified in, at, you know, for state competition in those areas. So we're really excited about that, and we'll be sure to keep you updated and have them come and, and visit and share their, their stories and experiences as well. And I hope to take a lot to, to Nashville, and everybody should count since it's in Indianapolis. So it'll be exciting. I'm all for a lot this year because it's an Indy. Yeah. yeah. The students. Less airplane tickets, less travel, higher. Take them all. Yeah, some of my seniors aren't real excited about Indianapolis, you know, <laughs> for nationals, but you know, it'll be more affordable for everybody. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you, you very Thanks. much. go ahead with our next celebration and uh, Mr. Hensley uh, uh, will also be um, uh, presenting um, Adult Education Center landmarks the 3000th RCS Adult Education graduate. It's always great when the programs you're involved in and the people you're involved in get, get to highlight and I happen to be able to be here twice uh, 
twice this evening. But first of all, I'd like to thank some of the people who've been involved. I've been involved in adult education now for two or three years, and I stepped in when Susie, when Susie decided she was heading towards retirement and spent a year with her and was able to learn. I want to thank you for your help there. And we can't uh, help but maybe mention Mrs. Robinson, who was involved in a uh, at the Fine Center for many years, and we thank both of you for all of your help. But at, at this time, I would like for John Thurlow to come forward. John's going to tell us a little bit about the history. Uh, John came to me. I, I'm a numbers guy. John's a numbers guy. So we, we spent a lot of time talking about numbers. And earlier this year, he said, hey, we're, we're almost to the 3,000th graduate. And I said, well, we, we need to do something with that. So John, John's got a little bit of history on how we got to 3,000. Um, the, the teachers and the students have done a wonderful job this year. As many of you know, we switched tests this year. The state switched from the GED to the TAS test, so it was a, <clears throat> a mass rush to see how many we could get graduated and finished up uh, by December. And I, I'm proud to say that we had more GEDs from, for, the, for one semester than we ever had. We had 129 GEDs this wow. fall, which was excellent. The, the teachers and the students just did a wonderful job, and, and John did a great job as well as we worked through that, especially the last two months, cramming and getting everybody through, so they did a great job. So, John? If you uh, bring us up to speed from a few years back. All right, thank you, Rusty. Thank you for having me. Uh, Richmond Adult Education began as Adult Evening School in 1956. Uh, Robert Lindsay, well, this photo's up, uh, was the vocational director from 1956 to 1982, and he was in a, a very ardent supporter of adult education and eventually won approval to begin offering high school credit classes in 1950. Uh, 68. So the first class to graduate was in uh, 1968 and then Mr. Lindsay wrote a f uh, federal grant to start GED classes in adult basic ed in 1979. And the first GED recognition ceremony was held in 1983 to honor graduates mm -hmm. and also to celebrate the decades of service that Mr. Lindsay uh, uh, had given to Richmond Community Schools. Since that time, our graduation photos look a little bit different <laughs> compared to recent. Nice. And technology in the classroom, that's a speaking spell, by the way. <laughs> it's, it's changed a little bit along with uh, some of our marketing ideas. <laughs> That's 1985, the Rose Festival. Oh, very cool. So we've changed some of our marketing over the ideas, but, but over the many years, uh, one thing has definitely not changed. <laughs> and uh, that that's seeing the joy <laughs> and the pride on the faces of graduates and their families and their teachers. So as a Richmond Adult Education celebrates its 3,000th graduate, we would like to thank our former directors and staff for their commitment to excellence. That's allowed us to reach this milestone. Um, Cheryl couldn't be here. She had the smarts to head south for vacation, <laughs> um, even though she told me she wasn't <laughs> leaving until tomorrow. Um, but I'd like to thank Susie. Uh, you led us through many transitions uh, over your six-year period, and there's our ribbon cutting for our current location. And uh, Dixie, for 30 years with adult education, you remember Tabitha here? Oh, yes. <laughs> well, a lot of these 3,000 graduates are yours, Dixie, so, so uh, we acknowledge you also. So as we look at our past accomplishments, our future looks bright because two people I have here with me this evening, um, and it's my pleasure to introduce uh, our 3,000th graduate, uh, Tammy Muckridge, and her teacher, Mindy Kaufman. Good evening, my name is Mindy Kaufman, and about five years ago, Mrs. Hively gave me the opportunity to changed my career path a little tiny bit and it landed me in the job that I think is the best job anybody could ask for. Each and every day I get to witness personally people transforming their lives and tonight I've brought one of those people to introduce to you. Um, I wrote some notes about Tammy because I didn't want to forget anything. Uh, she's been with me 
Tonight it is my pleasure to introduce to you one of the students, um, our 3,000th graduate, Tammy Muckridge. Tammy is a wife, mother, grandmother, sister, co-worker, friend, and for the past few years, a part-time student, and most recently, a new graduate. She is our 3,000th graduate. She is a perfect example of the type of student we see every day. She has many adult responsibilities pulling her in all directions, yet she finds the time, motivation, and perseverance to complete her education. Tammy will be the first to tell you that it hasn't been easy. There have been many, many obstacles in her way, but she has never given up. She has set an example for, our other, for others who enter the program. They may, they may be tired, scared, unsure, or motivated, confident, and ready. But either way, Tammy has proven that an education is important, possible, and worth the hard work. Please join me in congratulating Tammy Muckridge. First of all, um, she's right, this has not been easy. Um, when I was 16, I was diagnosed with dyslexic and was told that I would never get this. I moved to Indiana 12 years ago and started with John three years ago. And John was the first one to say, you could do it. Three years. <sighs> Three years later, I have it. I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but I got it. Without this program, people that do struggle with their education will never have one. Because I had the support, not only just family, I had the support of everyone in that building. Every teacher that was in that building, I could go to and they would help me and never shut their door to you. And I not only thank God, I thank the teachers that I got this and my family. You do this without crying. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <clears throat> Thank you for your time tonight, um, that we could join in on our celebration and, and we look to see who's next and move towards the next landmark. So thank you very much this evening. Thank you. And Tammy, congratulations. You have made us proud. Wow. <clears throat> our next celebration is a celebration from the high school. Um, we are currently involved in a very um, expanded AP um, uh, grant and um, we have um, some students and also um, Dr. Kimball is here this evening to uh, I think recognize and also sort of summarize what's been going on. We might start with what AP means. Um, okay, we, that's we a had good that one. That's a good. Just a quick recap. We, we're in first year of a, a part of a $7 million grant that we were able to get through. It comes from Race the Top, then to NIMSI, which is National Math and Science Initiative, then to Notre Dame. Notre Dame is the institution that's actually uh, putting it all into place and so we were selected as one of the schools by Notre Dame so um, we have more than doubled our AP or advanced placement classes at the high school which is pretty phenomenal for some of these guys and um, one of the requirements it's not a requirement it's a suggestion is that they attend some Saturday sessions to enrich their intensive learning because it is intensive it is rigorous and so there are three Saturday sessions. The first one was canceled because of a snow day. So this Saturday, um, July, January 11th was our makeup. So that was our first session. We'll have another session February 8th and another session <coughs> April 12th. So there'll be three total. They don't have to go. It's just encouraged to go. And Notre Dame told us that if we get 50% attendance right there, we're doing really great. 
we had 70% attendance rate at our Saturday sessions, so we're pretty proud of that. Um, I asked the kids to come and tell you because I think their voices and their joy of learning is just as important, but I want to give a quick rundown on some of these guys. They'll introduce themselves, but we have Nathan who's going to go to George Washington University and study international affairs. We have a person from the wrong side of the universe here, but this is Robert Spencer. He's going to cross the border and go to McGill in Canada, and he will do outstanding <laughs> there. And then she's still deciding. She has lots of choices. This is Lauren Griffin. She knows she's accepted into <coughs> Notre Dame, so that's one option. But she's going to have several options. They don't have to tell them right away until May, so we have some great chances there. I will say, though, that the guy in the middle here, unfortunately, is from Seattle. He has some very strong Seattle roots, and I think he's rooting for the Seahawks. <laughs> 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 we still like him. Omaha. <laughs> Omaha. Hey, you tell as, Dr. Oh, yeah, <laughs> as Dr. Kimball said, I'm Nathan Paul. I'm a senior. Uh, the AP classes I'm in are the AP language class, which Dr. Kimball teaches, uh, AP government, which is not a part of the grant, so that's not on the program we attended for Saturday, and also AP calculus. And do you? Again, I'm Robert Spencer. Um, I'm also an AP government, which, like Nathan said, isn't part of the grant. But I'm also part of the AP language um, with Dr. Kimball, AP physics with Pat Shuck, who's an amazing teacher, um, AP calculus with Mrs. Koger, uh, let's see what else, um, and AP statistics with Mrs. Jetmore. <laughs> and I'm Lauren Griffin. And I'm in AP Gov also, and I also am in AP Environmental Science with Thrasher, who is awesome, and um, AP English Literature with Mrs. Barker. And like, I wanted to go to the Saturday sessions because they're, they did, did offer a lot of information that we hadn't covered yet or had already in review, and I feel like personally they are very helpful, and we'll go to the rest of them. I know one of my favorite um, aspects of the Saturday session was uh, in normal class there might be from 10 students to 20 25 students every day whereas at the Saturday session each session you know my smallest session had about three kids in it so it was very much more personal and direct we could ask questions to the advisors there and they would help us directly and not just kind of a general help the entire class. It was much more personalized. That's one of my favorite aspects of the Saturday session. Just going back to that, the, that really affected me too. And what I really liked about the prog or program was that it was, you know, it was just the group of kids that you've known and you've been going to class with and you go to class with all year and you've known them. And then you get into the Saturday session, which who wants to go to school on Saturday, but we all show up and we all know each other. It's a small group of kids. And then they break up into even smaller groups. You get to choose uh, which sessions you want to go to for which classes you have. So there's this idea of, you know, like, oh, which session are you going to go to? Which session are you going to go to? But ultimately, when it comes down to the individual sessions, having that smaller group of people really helps. Uh, I think especially the AP teachers who came in were very personable. Uh, and they taught a lot of the things that we had learned earlier this year. But what helped is a lot of the classes, especially for AP calculus and math, everything builds from one point. So kind of going back to the roots and relearning that and kind of refreshing our memory on that was very helpful. Uh, and the teachers who came in and sat with us were very helpful. And I, for the people who missed that, I, my friends and I could not recommend it enough. I mean, there was, as crazy as it sounds, I've had the most fun I ever had at school on a Saturday. <laughs> and, I mean, and, and that sounds, you know, kind of crazy and the know. joke is there. But honestly, the program, I, I'm kind of speechless in how much it helped. It, there was so much of the going back and relearning everything that you thought you knew or thought you had a good grasp on, and then you're like, oh, I forgot about this. And then kind of easing back into the year, you know, we were supposed to have it uh, late or early December, and then, of course, we had the cancellation. So even coming back from break, oh, it was a very nice refresher, kind of coming back and easing back into the year. So I, if we can keep doing this, this is fantastic, honestly. I can't wait to go to the next two sessions. I know it's suggested, but 
it's very highly suggested, uh, at least from me and the student standpoint. It should be required, but again, that's a Saturday and can't take everyone out. But honestly, I, it's been fantastic, and I thank you all for giving us the opportunity to be a part of it. Awesome. Wow. <laughs> Good ambassadors. <laughs> um, before, if you want to ask questions from them, that's great. I did want to mention that the trainers, the people who teach the Saturday sessions, have been trained by Notre Dame, and they're all veterans in the AP program. They know their stuff forward, backwards, upside down. They've been giving the tests for 10 years and beyond. So we had some amazing experts. That's part of what made it great. Also, these sessions are open to anybody who wants to come and visit. If any of you are available on the next one, Mrs. Robinson made it, and she was like, this is amazing. I'm here on Saturday. And, do it. <laughs> and so they ran it like a conference that we would go to as adults, which was their intention. So starting at 8.30, they could choose one hour session, one particular topic in calculus. Then from 9.30 to 10.30, they go to a topic in English, then et cetera, all through the day. And they had a program. They got to choose <coughs> which of those. So it was kind of like one from column A, one from column B. And I think comprehensively, they were pretty pretty thorough, and then a couple of the sessions were repeated in the afternoon, so theoretically they could go to all of them. Uh, so that was six, six yeah. sessions? So you may want to ask. Karen, <laughs> Karen yes. could we back up a little bit and oh, sure. uh, talk about what AP, what that means? Okay, it means advanced placement, and so we have, like I said, almost doubled our offerings. We're now in multiple areas of math. We have statistics and calculus. We've had government, we've had um, AP US history, um, then we've added an English, we had literature, we've added language, <laughs> AP language, which is writing, it's, it's uh, comp composition and nonfiction. Uh, we have environmental science, chemistry, and physics. And so what that does is these students will then in May, and the ones who are in five are gonna be taking five tests. It's a national <laughs> test given the same tests across the board, they score it on a one through five, and if they get a three, four, or five, those are the highest scores, then that goes to college with them as college credit. So Robert would be going with five college credit classes, that's three semester hours, you know, do the math, what's a, a semester hour cost at college today? So it also gives them a real leg up, sometimes it gives them almost a full year of actually jumping into some of the higher level classes in college, which is really important. Under this grant, on Saturday, we had drawings for over $500 worth of gifts that came from the grant. So like there was an e-reader and $50 gift certificates to Best Buy and Subway and things like that. And then if they get a three, four, or five, they will <laughs> each get $100 for each of those scores. So if Robert gets five, three fours or fives, he's gonna have $500 in his pocket. And the check will come from Notre Dame. It'll be written to Robert Spencer from Notre Dame, which comes out of the grant. And do you, do you have an idea of uh, how many uh, AP students we have at we're, the high school? We have a total, it's pushing 200. It's, it's up there. We're, we're, and our goal is to increase that enrollment as well. So I think about 150 showed up on Saturday, which was, wow. it was pretty big. Um, Huge. One of the other things that is important about this, um, and Karen mentioned the fact that we've uh, doubled our advanced placement classes. Uh, we're going to add another advanced placement class next year, and Denise Selm <laughs> will be teaching our advanced placement computer science course next year. Uh, and, and just a little side note, uh, there have been several states within the United States that have done grants similar to this. And what the correlation is that is so important, number one, is to increase the number of our students taking advanced placement courses. And what they have found in the other states is that by students taking advanced placement courses, courses in high school and the rigor that those courses demand helps those students <clears throat> be successful in college. There's a direct correlation to advanced placement in high school and the rigor and college success. So we are so excited and uh, fortunate uh, to be able to have this grant uh, from Notre Dame so that our students at Richmond High School can benefit from that. Super. 
Okay, and I, I just wanted to say that I was so impressed with the kids in the classrooms I visited, and I got to most of them, but they were so engaged in what they were doing. I mean, it was just very intense. They were very focused. They were just chit-chatting among themselves about this is just great, this is wonderful. You know, it was, it was really great to see kids in there on Saturday with that much enthusiasm in tough classes. Mm -hmm. I noticed the, the statistics class was packed, <laughs> so, uh, but there were, ki there were kids everywhere and, and very engaged, so very positive about it. When is the next mm -hmm. Saturday session? The 8th. Uh, February 8th at Richmond High School. Um, the science classes take place in the science wing. The other classes take place around the library right the the classrooms there's four or five classrooms there around the library but if you show up we the center is at the cafeteria they come in they get a free breakfast they get a free lunch that's part of the the grant from Notre Dame and so they register they sign up they get um, uh, raffle tickets for their drawings and things like that and they register and then they get a program with each room assigned so they can pick which session and which room just like if you were at a national conference it's really it really has a very <coughs> professional sense to it except for the girl's hair at eight o'clock on Saturday morning. I've never seen people roll out of bed and look that way on Saturday morning. <laughs> <laughs> it was funny. We had an award for worse hair. It was okay. They still were learning. So <laughs> it was a good experience. Well I would also um, we have recognized our students but I would like to recognize <clears throat> you Karen because you um, with your expertise grant writing uh, have help to give this opportunity for our students and um, thank we thank you very much for uh, all that you do and uh, all you do for our students the so word the you. phrase that came out today by accident I was meeting with Rob and uh, and I said something about well with a grant you can touch such a wide variety such a large number and I think that's what motivates me is you can touch a lot of lives so that's important but thank and you. I still, you should pick on the Seahawks guy. <laughs> 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 thank guy. you very much. Thank you. you. Omaha. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> and now we are ready for a riveting financial report <laughs> and financial action items. Good evening. Good evening. Nice presentation. A lot of good things are going on in Richmond Community Schools, and I'm proud to be here presenting my 10th annual report tonight. I started in 2005, and, I gave, and I've been working eight days, and I had to summarize 2004 <laughs> of all of Richmond Community Schools. That's how you break a new finance person in. <laughs> Hopefully we won't do that with Mrs. Scalf. <clears throat> Let's get going. 2013, uh, as we prepared this presentation, I thought I could get it down to under an hour and 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and as I prepared it, they said, Bob, why don't you make it about five minutes and see if they have any questions? <laughs> so I will give you the gift of five minutes, and I'll take as long as you want to talk about finance. Because I really enjoyed it. Whoever First, gave you that advice was a wise person. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mills. <laughs> Long story short, <coughs> nice year. No surprises. We're going to look uh, at our cash flow. Hopefully. And if we don't, we're going to talk about our cash flow, where we ended the thinking. year. Thinking. Sort of look at our cash flow. Where are you? Get out there. I'm going to get grouchy. <laughs> Don't want Bob Grouchy. Don't want Bob Grouchy. <laughs> Bob just 
Scott Crouch. <laughs> okay, here we go. I'm going to point to some numbers, and these are the meaningful numbers. Last year, this 2013, we ended the year with $35,952,000. That's $933,000 less than we brought in in 2012. So we better make $933,000 worth of cuts. And in fact, we have. Why were we down $933,000? There'll be no surprises to this group here. We had uh, all day kindergarten and a change in the formula. All day kindergarten was paid in December. Look, look at last year's numbers, 1690000 694 That million dollars was put up here. Uh, to follow that, what you really want to know is where we ended the year. And we ended the year right here at a plus $275,000. Now, you remember when we started negotiations and talking with the teachers and we had our September count <clears throat> that we believed that we were going to be $600,000 to the good with the increased enrollment with the charter schools coming to us, the children coming to us. We gave $475,000. <coughs> Uh, uh, much due, much needed, and much earned increases to our staff. Take 475 off of 650, there's your $275,000. So all things being equal now, that's where we ended the general fund. In, uh, uh, plus, and we're starting 2014 with a plus $275,000. But what does 2014 look like today? 13 and 14 look like today? We're going to have Nine hundred thousand more dollars in revenue from the state this year. Where's that coming from? Five hundred thousand dollars going to come from all-day kindergarten because we're going to get a year's worth of all-day kindergarten, not six months. And five hundred thousand dollars is coming for additional students in the funding formula. I project that we're going to have the same other income of six hundred ninety-four, six hundred ninety-seven thousand dollars. We're going to have some shifts and some salaries, but the real line you want to look at is where are we starting the year? We're starting the year now with a minus $8,000. Now when we have our February student count, which will show us what our ADM and what our revenue will be for the next six months, which we will give you an update on that tomorrow, we will know how it is. Well, Mr. Connington, if, ever, if our revenue is the same and we're going to have some salaries, where did $275,000 go? R P and L. <laughs> I knew that was coming. <laughs> Actually, plus some. <laughs> plus some. That's right. Oh my God. <laughs> Our financial report that I uh, give to you in February will be very accurate on what 2014 is going to look like. We'll have our student count, we'll have some revenue, we'll know where our expenses. If you get a chance to talk to your building level principals, the administrators around here, I've never worked for a corporation <coughs> that had the discipline to put in a plan and execute it financially the way this corporation does. <coughs> I want to show you another number that uh, people have probably forgot. 2009 wasn't that long ago to some of us. I think everybody around the table. Would you look at our revenue number in 2009 for the general fund? $133,000 short of $40 million. You see what it is? $36 million. We've taken $4 million out of the operations of Richmond Community Schools, and we have busing, as, w as well as it's ever been. We've made the tough, we haven't tried to touch the classroom. We've had to make some tough decisions. A board, pat yourself on the back. My goodness, look at the decisions you had to make. 
We've included, we were done with the Safe School Grant, and we took $500,000 of continuing ser uh, of repeat services that we did that, and we're still balancing the budget. <clears throat> still balancing the budget. That's discipline. That's a disciplined organization. I would, could go through every fund that we have, but I won't. That ends my presentation for this evening. I would be glad to answer any questions you might have. Looks like you get to sit down. <laughs> I do have a comment, Linda. I have a comment. Suzanne. Um, I just, before we came, I saw a news report on, I don't know, one of the Indianapolis channels that was saying that, that oh, all these schools are in desperate place and that this, these new formulas have just left them, um, you know, in a bad place and they just didn't see it coming and property taxes and, and I am so proud of this organization because it has been um, the last two superintendents and the people around them and the people that work here, exactly what you just said, discipline and putting together a plan, forward thinking, um, bravery, being brave enough to make the right decisions. And we deserve this whole organization and community deserves credit for that because we are not having, it's not that we're not having hard conversations but we're making decisions and some of these other organizations did not do that and they are sh really in bad spots right now and we aren't and I am proud of us. Mr. Cross. Just a question Bob real quickly. Can you approximate how much was revenue was lost to the circuit breaker caps? $800,000. I think some people need to realize that the talk going in Indianapolis now about eliminating or phasing yes. out personal property tax. Well, with in other taxing units, there can be a counterbalancing impact on that because to get their, their, their regular levy, they're <coughs> going to have to increase their rates. By increasing their rates, that means more parcels are going to hit the circuit breaker, which yes. means that that unrecoverable revenue, is apt, lost revenue, is apt to go up. Yes. So that's another gift. And that's just an additional blow <laughs> that's on its way. And so they're really in a bad spot and again I'm not saying it's not going to hit us but we're in a better position to do something about it so thank you thank you thank you give Mr. Coddington a chance to uh, get his papers together um, he has a resolution request here We can do that from <clears throat> here. Tonight we ask the board uh, for temporary transfer to a depleted fund. Our cash balance in the general fund is $274,891. And there is a temporary transfer. We, there is a need for a temporary transfer from the rainy day fund to the general fund of $1 million to maintain a positive cash position. This temporary loan will be repaid by December 31st, 2030, December 30th, 2014. <laughs> it's recommended that the board approve the transfer request for temporary transfer to a depleted general fund. We have a motion. Kelly Baumgartner, seconded by Suzanne Derengowski. Comments or questions? All those in favor signify by uh, saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Thank you. Again, we have a resolution for a transfer for, uh, to a depleted, temporary transfer to a depleted fund. Our current cash balance for the pension bond fund is $585,578. Our January 2014 pension bond payment is $861,331. Therefore, there is a need for a temporary transfer from the rainy day fund to the pension bond fund of $350,000 to maintain a positive cash position. This loan will be repaid December 30th, 2014. Therefore, it is recommended that the school board approve the request for a temporary transfer <coughs> to the depleted fund. Motion made by Susan Hively, Hively seconded by Aaron Stevens. Comments or questions? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Thank you. Keep going. 
Four point four. Go ahead. Thank you. Action item: uh, the 2013 budget appropriation transfers uh, through the general fund and the transportation operating fund. I believe, as everyone knows, that we put these budget together 18 months in advance. Then we have a limit of which we're allowed to spend, but we don't know where there's going to be extra need. Need so. What we do is we make sure that we keep the hole where it's supposed to be, but we have to transfer because at the end of the year you can have no money. So money where we had excess appropriation is taken to where we needed it. Uh, we do this every year. It give, gives us a clean Form 9, which we'll be talking about later. It gives us a clean budget for the State Board of Accounts. Therefore, we recommend that the school board approve the resolution for the 2013 budget appropriation transfers in the general fund and transportation operating fund as presented. Okay, motion made by Jeff Slifer, seconded by Dixie Robinson. Comments or questions? Um, that's within funds, so. Yes, it just, and it's within just the so same the program number right. in the fund, but we'll take a program number to 12 buildings. I just wanted the public to understand that we're not taking um, transportation money and putting it into the general fund. This is all within general the same fund. fund. To gen Thank you. That's a, that's a good point, Mr. Slifer. Okay. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Thank you. And now we are ready for Board of Finance Organization. I'll go ahead and uh, let uh, Mrs. Morgison uh, move to that. Okay, we need to uh, first of all close the Board of School Trustees meeting and convene a Board of Finance, so I need a motion. Uh, Kelly Baumgartner makes the motion, Second. seconded by Jeff Slifer. Comments or questions? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Um, now we need, should I go ahead? We need a motion to elect the school board president and secretary, secretary as the president and secretary of the Board of Finance. So moved. M motion made by Susie Hively. Second. Seconded by Suzanne Derengowski. Comments or questions? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. <laughs> now, Mr. Connington will present the investment summary report and the investment income policy. Does anyone have a copy of my investment summary report? <laughs> yes, I do. It's on the I, computer. I handed it to you. It's valuable for something tonight. Thank you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Let me get my composure back here. <laughs> our report, uh, our board policy states that all interest income from all funds and all and all revenue goes to the general fund to support student learning. So with that this year, we had no CDs uh, with that, but we do have our money uh, put in three different local banks. Uh, our grand total on interest for last year is now down to $14,606.66. With that, uh, it is down from thirty-four thousand dollars last year, and a lot of a lot of re and that's not just interest rates. While it's a lot of it, <coughs> you have to realize virtually everything we have now is reimbursable. They want us to front the money, so they, the Indianapolis or Washington, can keep the cash yep. and make the interest on this big of money, and so we're in deficit. Not deficit spending. That's a wrong word. We have, we have to come up with the expense, pay the expense, and then get reimbursed for it. And it just So there's really not a lot to sit around being invested. That's right. So that's our policy, and I ask the board to uh, accept our investment report as presented. 
Need a motion? Motion made by Dixie Robinson, seconded by Aaron Stevens. Comments or questions? All those in favor signify <coughs> by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. And now I need a motion to close the finance meeting so and reconvene as the Board of Second. School Trustees. Motion made by Suzanne Derengowski, seconded by Kelly Baumgartner. Comments or questions? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Okay, we're ready for action okay. items. First action item would be donations. Tonight we ask the board to accept the following donations from Stephen McDowell to RHS Athletics for the football team, from Delta Kappa Gamma Kappa Chapter to Crestdale Elementary Miranda Smith's Classroom for calculators for the Early Career Educators mm -hmm. Program, from the NACCO Credit Union to Crestdale Elementary Miranda Smith's Classroom for dictionaries, from Richmond Power and Light to Hibbert Intermediate School Library Two display hanging rails for the library. From Vintage Wheels uh, Auto Club to Test Intermediate for the sensory room and the canned food drive. From the Westview PTO to Westview Elementary School for the purchase of speakers and an amplifier system. We ask the board to accept these very generous donations of $5,087.80. So moved. A motion made by Jeff Slifer, seconded by Susie Hively. Comments or questions? Not? Thank you. Thank yes. You. yes, thank you, thank you. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. The next action item is an application for a national leadership grant to the high school library. Um, Dr. Kimball is here tonight. Um, we would, um, I think, like to move forward on this grant. Um, would you like to share anything in terms of what, what we're applying for and uh, what we're looking to gain from this grant? Um, this is a grant that we found through, we were originally looking for some substantial ones, which we're always doing, and there's one <coughs> that we're gonna try for next year because they're using Chicago and, and Washington, D.C. as the pilot. And so we'll do that one next year, but this one fell out of that search, and so we were pretty excited about it. It is a national leadership grant for libraries, and it is, uh, we're to, we've had a planning session. The superintendent had a planning committee last year with representatives from all levels of libraries. So we have Mrs. Moss and Mrs. Christ here with us tonight, and they've been helping and assisting with some of the planning. The high school library uh, was last designed in 1982, and so we see there's some room for innovation <laughs> and some room for helping it move forward and come more into the 21st century and offer skills for students or facility to build skills for students. Career and college readiness is obviously one of the focuses and these guys are so socially uh, media savvy and we just don't have the facility in all places to get them up on that and get them out of Richmond High School ready for a career in those particular areas. So that's one of our goals. We have many different projects uh, embedded in this. We've done a lot of research. Mr. Tidra and I met last week with um, a computer science professor from Ball State who was stellar and we're hoping to maybe bring him in as a consultant on it as well as our local resources. But he really moved us forward quickly. The neat part about all of these is that you have to show that you've done research and the research part just just puts us right where we need to be because we know what we need and we know what's out there and what's current rather than anything that's older. Um, Part of this also, we visited some schools and Mrs. Morgison and Mrs. Robinson joined us on one. And it's kind of that, in, in the back of my head, I keep going, you know when you say, be careful what you ask for, because if you take them along, they want $10 million worth of stuff. So <laughs> we're working on that one. <laughs> but it's kind of a, you get to write your ticket and that's exciting and it's fun and great resources, great input, great ideas. So mostly just also the dialogue of being able to see what can we do and how could we do it? So it's pretty exciting. So it is directed towards the high school library at this point. We were going to then try to tip back into all the middle schools and the elementaries as well and upgrade and digitize. <laughs> That's the new vocabulary, so. 
pretty exciting. It is for 50,000 to 500,000. So we're obviously going to go for the 500. I was told she said go for the 500. So we're going for the 500,000. Uh, but then, of course, they can award it in any increment as they see fit once it goes through. It would start October 2014 if we're awarded. We go for one or two years. We haven't figured out which way they really want us to do it. So it's exciting. Pretty good. Yes. Well, and I just wanted to say <laughs> that it was what we saw was fabulous, you know, and you, you wish that you could have all of that, and hopefully someday we will. Mm -hmm. uh, but I also wanted to say a big thank you to our librarians that attended because they saw things that they could go back right now and do without any money. Mm -hmm. And uh, they went back with that intention uh, to start working and doing new things. They've been libraries. seriously helping with the planning, and it's wonderful because they're right there with it. So. Pretty exciting. We're not going to name the school we went to because <laughs> they had a lot of nice awesome. candy there <laughs> as far as things that we wanted. They had a, what was the van, the TV van? The TV van, yes. It was, uh, it was like a $700,000 van. <laughs> with the radio television and they go around with the van full of equipment yeah. and do a lot of things for the government right. because they can get them cheaper than they can a regular TV crew. Um, there was a number of things. The radio television studio was just <coughs> fabulous. <laughs> they did call their library now a Mediaplex. So when you walk in, it's stunning. It immediately sets a totally different tone. <coughs> and that's what we're going to for. We're going to try to implement some of the things that the very moment you walk in the door, it's a whole different feel. And that's, that's Well, exciting. the rooms where the kids could work, uh, the I forget exactly what they were, collaborative rooms. They, they had one called the Creative, creative Thought creative Room. Creative Thought Room. And Collaborative Stations. Um, there are a lot of really uh, very key, important educational experiences there. So let's put well, the, the It was definitely set up for 21st century learning. Yes. And to prepare students for those 21st century skills. And we're going there. When we hear, you know, that some of these businesses are ready to go, we need to get our kids with the skills that's ready to go. Right. And that's one of the movements we're going forward with. So we had a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Karen, did you have something that you wanted to say? Oh, yes. I'm, financial I'm working with her as well. Yeah. <laughs> that's good. Um, Come I on just up. wanted to make you guys aware of a couple of um, special situations that this grant um, has. It's a, it's a wonderful opportunity that we're given, but there are also some limitations. And this is a matching grant, and you have to match 100% of the funds if you uh, go for anything over 250000 So we are working very closely um, with the finance department, Dr. Dwarf and Dr. Kimball, to make sure that we can provide the resources out of this grant without um, making things at all um, difficult for the grant or difficult for the corporation. So we're looking at a lot of possibilities. <coughs> the grant also does not allow any brick or mortar changes to the library structure. So we're really focusing on um, the program matter that, that we can do with this. But I wanted the board to be aware that the grant does have some limitations by being a matching grant. But it is a wonderful opportunity, and it's a lot of money to put toward um, our school system and, and all of our buildings to do pretty excellent things for the students so okay. thank you okay I need a motion it is an action item it, right it is an action item. okay I need a motion to accept this grant so moved motion made by Aaron Stevens seconded by uh, Susie Hively uh, comments or questions again Dr. Kimball thank you thank you thank you and thank you to um, um, Marthea Christ and Jane Moss for being here this evening. Do either one of you wish to say anything? Come forward. Jane says, I just put my hat on. I wanted to make the time that you have spent here worthwhile. Well, so. thank you. Good evening, everyone. And I do want to thank Dr. Kimball very much. Uh, for finding this grant for us and as she stated we are sorely in need of a facelift in uh, the Richmond High School Library so we will cross our fingers and hope that we get this grant but we're very appreciative 
for what she's done for us. Thank, Thank you, Marthea. Thanks. And Marthea is the media <laughs> specialist at the high school. Thank you. So thank you. Okay, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. The next item is a uh, action item on a bus boss software. And I'll just add that it, school systems use a variety of software packages to operate more efficiently. And periodically, we have to review um, are we doing the best we can with the current software? And uh, this, this item relates to that, um, that we are looking to upgrade and um, um, go to another package in order to maybe be more versatile in what we do with our bus package. So um, Mr. Tedro would like to speak briefly and um, hopefully uh, move forward. Thank you, uh, Mr. Millis. But currently we use a software called EduLog. It's been effective for us, but uh, through the changing times and the way we do routing and, and student safety, we feel that bus boss can be more dynamic for us and versatile. Uh, like I said, Edulog has served our needs in a way, but with the bus boss, we can get key information about students uh, much quicker. Uh, one of the uh, pieces of, uh, that's in bus boss is as a, uh, a nice rostering software that allows uh, bus drivers to know who's on their bus, uh, wh where they're transported to, when they're off of that bus. And that information is not just with the bus driver, it's instantaneously transmitted back to that server so that your schools can see that information, principals in a secure way, even your parents can see that so they know where that student is using a uh, ID card and so forth that each student would have. I'm looking over at Mrs. Daragowski because, of course, she's in charge of that right now. But that is the key thing is making sure that safety of those kids is paramount when we talk about the investment we have. Uh, a couple other neat features that I like to point out is one is creating uh, kind of ad hoc routes. You can do multiple routes. You can kind of layer the routes. Uh, we have several routes that we have to do depending on the day of the week and what's available in the afternoon and so forth. And Bus Boss allows that uh, ease. Also, it allows information to be pushed back into our student information system in, in a um, uh, uh, dynamic way. Right now, we do exports from our student information system, which is PowerSchool, every night. EduLaw grabs it, but that information doesn't really get pushed back down into PowerSchool from, from EduLaw. This is going to allow us to do a seamless transaction. What that means is we can get the information of a new student to Bus Boss as soon as they're in PowerSchool. They can assign the, a bus route and a bus number to that student, and that's pushed back down into uh, power school within moments. That way the principal knows, the secretary, and so forth, what bus that student's riding. So it, it, it again, keys in on that um, uh, school, student's safety. Uh, finally, a, another piece that uh, is interesting, too, is, is it also has a, a, an alert system that highlights known sex offenders and other threats in the area. So if a bus driver has to maybe choose a different stopping point ad hoc, they can, they can see that information instantaneously. So uh, what I'm doing is I'm recommended that we adopt, adopt the bus boss transportation and management software. Uh, the total cost of the software and services is $37,295. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer. Okay, do I have a motion? A motion made by Susie Hively, seconded by Kelly Baumgartner. Now, comments or questions? Jeff? Uh, you're going to, so you're going to take the option of the watchdog sex offender as well? Uh, correct. That was Okay, so that'll be another $495 okay. just for... Um, but the way the... What really... It, what I really liked about it was it talked about the GPS tracking. Mm -hmm. um, right. Mm -hmm. So what... That's all... So a, st a student's going to have a card and they'll scan onto the bus. Right, that's one of the options we've talked about. And, and so once that student scans onto the bus, mm -hmm. then that's where the GPS is picked up from the bus then? Right, it's using a not cellular from the service. In, not from the individual up. student, but just it, it right. picks up from the bus. So as long as that student's scanned in. Right, and as they exit the bus, they would scan and then they would know that they're off the bus. So, okay. Uh, that, that helps with the ease of knowing where that student is and, and speed of on and off the bus, you know, 
So, so as long as we're disciplined in making sure that each student scans in, That'll be the. And there will have to be an uh, option initially, as we get disciplined about right. that, for us to be able to enter a, kit, a student in as if, if they miss their badge or whatever. So. Right. Susie, just as a past principal, um, one of the things that I've always, always wanted us to have for safety reason is a way to get a a a, a route specific uh, roster. Mm -hmm. Because you don't know when the kid when the bus comes into school in the morning, necessarily who got on that bus, right. and when there's a problem or a safety issue or anything, I mean you know who you expect to be on that bus, but you don't know who actually showed up. Right. So having that will be, I think, will improve our our um, opportunity to support safety dramatically. I'm real pleased to, to hear that. I think the level the the parents should really like that. Right. Because they'll be able to, your, they'll be able to access through PowerSchool and see. That's our understanding. We have some right. scenarios to run through first to make sure that we understand it absolutely we correctly. We want to make sure that we test all that stuff. We're not going to introduce that day one until we're sec we know that it's secure and so forth. So, so the, this the yeah. interaction is real time data exchange. Correct. It's no export of information or anything. Correct. Okay. It uses a system right inside PowerSchool to to, ex to to send and receive that information back and forth. So. Aaron, I, I don't know if you did, but other than mentioning, would you briefly describe the uh, watchdog sex offender system? That's listen, what that does is uh, it um, well it probably ties into the federal database. What it does is it has up to date sex offender information. I'm not sure where it gets it from. I'll have to get that for you, but it does have that as an alert that goes out to people managing it and to the bus drivers to show them that threat. And uh, it, it has um, suggestions for maybe a, a nearby stop if they don't, if they think that threat is too close to the, uh, to that stop for that student, so. Currently there are websites we monitor frequently for that same information, but this would be real time and more, more automatic. I have a couple other questions I'll ask afterwards. Okay, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Thank you. The uh, next action item is we're seeking permission to advertise for an additional appropriation in the debt service fund. When we got our 1782 and our tax uh, revenue and taxes and our approved budget in December, there were two things that, uh, that procedurally weren't correct, but they don't impact that. And I want to show an amortization schedule that I believe is in your packet. And if we look at these numbers right here, this is how I put the budget together. How many payments do we have in 2014? One. In 2015, we have two. So the one payment is due on January the 15th of 2015. So we ask for the revenue through our taxes in spring and in fall so we would have the money to make the payment January of 2015. The DLG, DLGF, Division of Local Government Finances perspective said, we want you to make that payment on December 31st, 2014. We have the cash to make that payment. We don't have the appropriation because we only ask for the appropriation <coughs> For the July payment. So we have to have an additional hearing. Tonight I'm asking for an additional hearing <coughs> to approve permission to advertise to the notice of taxpayers for additional appropriation in the debt <coughs> service fund as presented in the budget modifications PowerPoint that I just gave you. This doesn't change our tax rate, doesn't change our revenue, doesn't change anything. I talked to the bank, the bank says, 
you send that payment anytime before January the 15th, I'm happy. But the DLGF wants us to send it out December 31st, and with that, we'll need an additional appropriation. Okay. Um, do I have a motion, please? I'll move. Um, motion made by Jeff Slifer, seconded by Aaron Stevens. Comments or questions? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Thank you. The next action item, um, we seek permission to advertise an amended CPF plan. Again, we've had a procedural problem that came. Remember, we advertised a CPF plan of $5.9 million. And they came back and gave us a CPF plan of I have two. <laughs> three million. 855,000. Now, the way they gave us that when they made the cuts, you see we pay utilities a million 34,000. Our original plan says that. The plan that we amended plan that we're going to ask for the same, no change. Insurance, no change. We put $1,721,189 under land acquisitions. That's our levy neutrality to cut that $1,721,000 out. They left it in, and they cut purchase of equipment, building improvement, and emergency maintenance. So we're asking to eliminate the land acquisition appropriation because we don't expect to buy any land this year and put it back to our CPF plan as we presented to the board for building improvements, purchase of equipment, and emergency maintenance. Again, no change in the appropriation, no change in the budget, no change this, uh, and we have to have a public hearing because it's an, amend it's an amended plan. Now we put this together, so this is what I want to show the board, a timeline on both of these. Request for permission to advertise. We will have the public, uh, we'll advertise for a public hearing with approval tonight. We'll have a second publication. We will come back on the fe first meeting in February for a public hearing. And I'm asking because there's no material change in any plan that we approve the plan on after the public hearing so we can get it to the county auditor for a remonstrance period so we can submit it to the DGLF to get approval of it so we can start spending some of that on our buildings as, as we need to. Does that make sense on why, why we're asking to do it? Rather than, if not, they're going to have it for th up to 30 days. It'll be into the first quarter before we could spend money in emergency maintenance in this. Or the additional money, right? Yes. Therefore, I ask the board tonight to approve and give us permission to advertise the amended 2014-2016 capital projects fund as presented in my PowerPoint. Motion made by Kelly Baumgartner, seconded by Susie Hively. Comments or questions? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you. The next action item involves a topic that we um, uh, had last uh, board meeting at our work session involving the Highland Heights property. Uh, if you recall, um, there was a discussion on how we could uh, utilize Highland Heights as a property and um, general recommendation uh, that would involve um, Reed Hospital. Um, Mr. Cross went through um, several uh, recommendations uh, in terms of how we could handle that. Um, we do have a recommended action this evening uh, in terms of how uh, Dr. Borf and um, Mr. Cross would like to move forward with that. 
Um, I'll read the recommendation, and then I think if Mr. Cross or any board members want to um, weigh in on that, that would be welcomed. The recommendation is to approve the initiation of negotiations to secure a governmental entity agreeable to accepting the transfer of the Highland Heights property for purposes of subsequent lease. Any um, additional comments uh, on that item? Susie. Um, I think I know the answer to this, but I someone contacted me and I said I would ask the question because I didn't wasn't sure I I wanted to make sure my answer was correct. Um, this uh, citizen thought that there was a restriction in the original purchase of the land that the land could only be used for a school and when as we were talking a little further I thought perhaps they were confused about the issue of this the building being you on that list that it could be it would be available for other school uses outside of our corporation and so I wasn't sure, and I, so I thought, well, I better ask a clarifying question if there was anything in the original documentation when we received that land that restricted its use that we're aware of. I assume not, or we wouldn't probably be I'm having... I'm not searched the title. I'm not searched the title. Okay. I wasn't around when we got it, I don't think. Okay. I think that might predate me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, we, I, I can, I can have that, that obviously that researched, but, uh, but we're not aware of anything at this okay. point. That doesn't, you know, if it's there, then we'll have to deal with it. Other questions, uh, Jeff? Well, I th one of the things I had talked to Dr. Borf before he left, um, um, because I originally kind of think this, my first thought was this is a little backwards, uh, in, in the fact that maybe. Um, at this point, we don't even know how serious Reed Hospital is. Um, so it's from my understanding that w the reason why this is important that this goes forward is for us to be able to sit down. It's not as simple as it is in the private sector. You, can, you could go sit down to a, a prospective tenant and you can talk about a potential lease and and stuff like that. and really we were not allowed to do that so this is the only way that allow us to start seeing if there is real interest and in, and in real <coughs> lease terms available <coughs> that's so, what I understand I, I, so I think that it, same conversation so I think it's important for people to understand especially if they read this in the paper tomorrow that all that we're really approving tonight unless I'm wrong some all we're approving tonight is for them to begin the discussions legally to see if there is a real interest and any any kind of term or agreement or will be definitely coming back to us before any action takes place yeah, yeah you'll have to be a signatory to the, the primary lease document but by no mo no means are we um, no, locked this in is, on anything this is not to do a, a lease right. is that correct mm -hmm. Ron this is just to seek a government agency is that correct to, um, to act a, as a, a conduit for a lease? Right. But right. Yet you're not approving the lease or right. anything of that nature until. And we have we need to do this so that the conversation can, can continue. To, you know, we can't do it unilaterally unless it's going to be fair market value. And I don't believe that's what was expressed, at least by Reed. Okay. And there will be another a couple, there will be another procedural requirement. You'll have to. Before we would enter into that lease, there would have to be a board resolution finding that <coughs> the property is in the best interest of the right. school corporation and the taxpayers. So lots of conversation, yeah. Dr. Forbes addressed that issue to some degree, but I think the most compelling is that our legitimate MAI appraisal done by two independent appraisers of Dennis Middle School resulted in an appraised value of less than $700,000. So uh, that's for Dennis. Uh, we're not dealing with. Uh, a big ticket item here as far as fair market value goes so I think the intrinsic potential value to be used down you know to have this 
still be owned, but you have to be relieved from the ongoing burden of occupancy, which is what the lease would do. It would be a pass-through lease with all cost of maintenance, utilities, what have you, pass through to the to the tenant. Uh, Mr. Cotty can speak to that, but I think it's obviously advantageous because I don't think we're going to be foregoing an opportunity to realize a one-time treasure trove of monies to on a sale of the property based upon market conditions as I understand them. Okay. Um, I need a motion. So moved. Motion made by Aaron Stevens, seconded by Jeff Second. Slifer. Any more comments or questions? This, Susie, I guess would also allow for there to be any discovery if there is in that yes. language mm -hmm. uh, that you were concerned about. It seems it would. There's, I had five or six questions I fired off to Dr. Bork right away. He says, Jeff, we'll have plenty of time to discuss all of these <laughs> questions. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. And we are now at our press conference portion of the meeting. Anyone from the press have questions or seeing Ron's none? asking about the policies. Oh. Seeing none, we will go to consent items. <coughs> um, a question was asked, um, I think we had posted on our website, on our agenda, uh, action on policy section 6000. And uh, we're going to, I, I guess, table it. I don't know if we need a formal motion to table that, but um, we um, have a, a couple persons on the committee, um, at least one anyway, that would like to um, get into those a little further to make sure that um, uh, they're comfortable with that. So um, I don't know if we should table that as an action item or not. He just pulled it off the agenda, didn't yeah. he? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Didn't remove the agenda. It's not even on the agenda. Okay. Okay. I heard Mr. Cross asking about it, and I just want to make sure he understood. I'm, so okay. I'm sorry. Now we're ready for consent items. <coughs> the consent items this evening um, would be approval of the uh, January 8th, 2014 board meeting minutes and executive session minutes the human resources recommendations, accounts payable, the Form 9 biannual financial report, the Common Wage Committee recommendation, approval of overnight field trip for fourth graders at Charles and Fairview Elementary Schools to uh, attend that, and the corporate sponsored field trip. And you're rec are you I would recommend all those consent items be approved. Okay, a motion made by Jeff Slifer, seconded by Susie Hively. Comments or questions? Um, I have a question. Okay, Jeff. I, and it could be after the vote, but I, I'm not familiar with Grand Canyon University. I was curious. Uh, you know. it's, uh, I think the coursework is done mostly online from the folks here. And they need, a, when they need a place the student teach, they call us and then we place the students. And it's just our agreement with them. Off the top of my head, Jeff, I can't tell you where they're located. So it's Probably around the Grand Canyon. <laughs> 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 I wouldn't assume that. <laughs> but is this it's a fairly known. new agreement or have we had? It is a new agreement. We, we have, I think we placed the student teacher last year and they you know we were so accommodating and easy to work with they don't want to place other students with us okay more <coughs> and more uh, degrees are being obtained online. online but they still need the practical experience of being in a classroom so they have to connect with the school district well, i think it's important that they do that but but and, well i can just speak from um working at iu east that um, they, this oftentimes does happen at, for online classes. Mm -hmm. And then they often use, obviously, a school district to place uh, their students, but they also use the university supervisors from, like, IU East to um, go in and do observations and so forth. Also, oh, that makes sense, yeah. Okay, well, thank you. 
Kelly? Um, I wanted to hear more about the, the destination Costa Rica mm -hmm. trip. And they're um, here. Should we do that after we vote? Or should mm -mm. we talk about it right now? No, this is the time. Okay, uh, and I think we've got mm -hmm. some people out there that are actually wanting to go and. Thank you again. Um, I'm going to let uh, Ms. Hogg and the two students speak. Um, this is a continuation of a humanitarian project that was started last year. Uh, we had two Richmond High School students travel to Costa Rica uh, with the Women Like Us Foundation as the sponsor. Uh, we have students that are interested. We have teachers that are interested. And this is, to me, uh, just an example of uh, what our culture at Richmond High School in serving others and becoming global citizens is all about. So I will let them tell you all about their Costa Rica uh, partnership. Good evening. Um, I come here sometimes and I get nervous every time so um, I want to thank you for inviting us back again my partner in crime Meg Rayburn is in the office or <laughs> yeah I can't even talk she's with us tonight too um, last year we decided that with our passion for teaching we also have a passion for helping others and um, providing services for others and uh, support and also we love to travel and so we developed the RHS Travel Club last year and um, this summer we plan to go to California but next summer we hope to start this global partnership um, with the, a school in Costa Rica. Um, so these two folks, Piper Gleason and Jordan Christian, last year were students of mine and I came back from this trip uh, to Costa Rica really empowered to like go back more often and take more students because the two girls Amber Whitehead and Aubrey Bowen who came with me on the trip um, they were very inspired to um, not only help other people but they also saw a change in themselves while they were there and so I spoke a lot to um, their class in particular about having this opportunity be something that we do annually and um, what an impact uh, working with the Women Like Us organization and Peace Through Yoga had had on us and that we wanted to carry their mission along. Uh, the Women Like Us Foundation is run by a woman named <coughs> excuse me, uh, Deb Myers and she is the one who's in charge of the one girl at a time portion of that which allows these girls to be mentored throughout the year with life coach opportunities and things like that but then they also as a result of the program get to go on this humanitarian trip to Costa Rica and they were able to help out at a school um, that actually is uh, set up by this woman Sally Brown Bassett some of you might have heard of her before or you've heard of Ambassador she was the president of the Indianapolis chapter of Ambassador uh, for a long time and she's gone to over 130 countries she's uh, been to Costa Rica 10 years in a row and she's now trying to um, make this school an accredited international girls school and so we're really excited to have the opportunity to come on the scene right as they're receiving their accreditation um, and to be able to help sponsor some of these kids um, I kind of talked to you a little bit about our connection Ann Liebert is a local realtor here in town and she is um, also a member of the women like us foundation and she brought this opportunity to Richmond last year and um, we just jumped on it and we had kids that were interested left and right and only two were selected unfortunately but um, we just decided that it was something that we could continue and that it would be easy to take not only girls but there were some guys that were interested too and so um, Sally uh, Brown Bassett who is in charge of the Costa Rica trip she's really excited about somehow forming a partnership and maybe a sister school opportunity for Richmond High School to help support their school one of the cool things that we get to do while we're down there is to bond with host families and so the students that we are helping at the school and that we are sponsoring at the school 
and <coughs> um, working with, we get to go into their homes and meet their families and see what their lives are like. Amber and I ate dinner with this family, Chevron, and then we ended up coming back and um, sponsoring his high school education this year. And so uh, I could cry just talking about it now. It's just really powerful um, to see this, the father built the house there that's in the picture and um, they live in a one room house and it's divided by sheets that have holes in them. And they put their best food and their best dishes and everything on the table for us. And we played bingo and we played games and I didn't know Spanish and they didn't know English, but we still connected and it was really cool. The other thing that these guys will get to go do if we uh, go is, this is what their state parks <laughs> look like in Costa Rica. So um, they have the opportunity to go river rafting and zip lining and um, hang out at this deserted beach and go swimming. Um, so that's a cool thing too. Uh, I already spoke earlier about Amber and Aubrey and how they taught, you know, these kids go down and they're addicted to their cell phones and Facebook and TV and um, there's none of that there, right? And so you are with yourself and with your thoughts and with the peace and the howler monkeys in the jungle. And um, so it was a cool experience to see them uh, really flourish down there. And, you know, it was also interesting. There were two other girls from <laughs> Indianapolis schools that went. And so to see that bond form between those, those girls also was cool. Um, and so <coughs> what we would like to do, we're shooting for June of 2015 to go on this trip. Um, the school was supposed to be accredited next month in February, but they've pushed that uh, to June, and I'm sure you guys can relate to that experience that accreditation is not um, always a smooth process. So um, they go to school from February to December, and so once this gets approved, we would like to sponsor one or two children and help them to get started in June with their education. And the kids have decided that they have some really cool fundraisers um, and just try to map out what our humanitarian side of it would be. I'm gonna let uh, Jordan and Piper talk to you just a little bit about why they wanna go and what inspired them to, to do this. Um, as many of you know, we have, uh, this past week we had a challenge day at RHS. And me being a current sophomore, this was my second year doing challenge day. And the motto of challenge day, you know, as it has been the past few years, is be the change that you want to see in the world. And I feel as going down to Costa Rica and forming a global partnership with the different countries, that going, going to there would help be the change that many of us would want to see. And I feel that would be a great opportunity for us not, I mean, as we, we have technology and everything, but one thing that inspired me the most when Ms. Hogg showed us the PowerPoint from the Costa Rica trip is that they, she said that they were happy with as little as they had compared to what we have. So that's something definitely I want to see going down there is how, how they truly are happy with what they have. I personally love to travel and I know the experience in the future. I want to go down and be in the Peace Corps when I get after college. And just being down there and the experience and seeing what these kids are like would be great for me. And not only that, we won't only be changing their lives, they'll be changing ours and teaching us things. And is that it? I came back, um, it was pretty difficult for me uh, as an adult and as a mother to come back and see my kids on their electronics and um, to be addicted to my electronics and also at the same time recognize that the peace that I felt while I was down there is something that I want other kids to experience and I want other adults to experience too. And um, So that's kind of our mission. We plan to start fundraising right away once this gets approved and hopefully have the money before school's out to sponsor a couple girls. The money um, goes for their tuition. It also pays for their uniforms and books. And then any extra funds, the girls travel like three miles a day to school on foot. And so they are trying to sponsor bikes for the kids as well. The boys typically get um, channeled into the high school pretty easily. And what they found is that the girls don't have the same opportunities uh, that the boys do. And they end up in service positions and not um, having the basic uh, 
cornerstones of education. So that's why they're focusing on girls at this point. And then also we're, we're trying to come up with a fundraiser in the fall and in the spring uh, to help offset the cost for the students uh, from Richmond High School that will go. Um, we just had a spaghetti dinner last Friday for the California kids um, that are in the travel club right now and it was extremely successful and so Mrs. Rayburn and I have vowed to um, put those fundraisers out there for the kids. This picture right here shows you um, their modest accommodations. We'll be in the middle of the rainforest and there are no windows, just screens and um, there are lots of bugs and lots of things that invade you in the middle of the evening. So it's a really cool place though. Um, the hotel has security. Um, Sally has been on this trip for 10 years, like I said, and she always goes to the same place and um, they just take very, very good care of you. That's it. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I've already talked about that and I think that's all. So do you guys have any questions? Nice Anybody? Show. I think we're all in awe. <laughs> yeah. You can all join us mm -hmm. whenever and you want to. I won't embarrass Jordan by um, saying that I was um, an elementary teacher of his. <laughs> but I am Too awfully late. proud of you, Jordan. <laughs> You won't embarrass me. Uh-uh. I don't want to <laughs> Well, if you get to go, I just hope that um, you're prepared for howler monkeys because they are really scary if they're unexpected. <laughs> they are. They sound like lions. Sound I mean, like they're lions, very, very yeah. loud. But then you see them, and they're the size of a raccoon. So <laughs> it's interesting. Well, thank you, thank Kate, you. for... Um, the work that you do with our students. You are appreciated. Oh, thank you very much. And I hope that um, that your, you meet your goals and your dreams come true because this sounds just awesome. Thank you. We hope so too. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thanks. Thanks for um, staying until <laughs> close to the end. <laughs> Okay, we need to um, vote. So um, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Mm -hmm. Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Could I interrupt? Yes, you bit. could. Just a bit. Um, I just would like to recognize, since you've approved it, <laughs> I li I'd like to recognize some personnel changes that are coming. Um, Karen Scalf is still in the audience, and Rob Tidro, I'll be bringing next time. There are going to be some position changes. And we have with us this evening <laughs> Allison King, who uh, will be the executive assistant to Dr. Boroff, effective one week from tomorrow, <laughs> <laughs> January 30th. Not that we're counting days or anything. But um, I wanted you to... Uh, recognize her and meet her maybe if she's able to stay after the meeting. Vicki's really smiling. <laughs> <laughs> Vicki is smiling very You're much smiling. and so am I. <laughs> uh, Allison, you want to come <laughs> forward please so that um, our viewing audience as well can um, meet the you. The can interview you. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> Well, um, welcome, and um, we are looking forward to working with you because uh, you have to take care of we as board members also, and that's a pretty that's a pretty tough job, <laughs> especially if you have to deal with Jeff. <laughs> I'm really no. excited, and I'm really anxious to start next week. Well, thank you. Welcome. Yes. Well, thank how'd, you. how'd your current employers take this? They were really surprised. Really? Yeah. Yeah. They were sad. Our gang. <laughs> <laughs> Their loss, our gain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, we will um, look forward to um, sharing with you and meeting you uh, next week again. Thank you. Ne one week, did you say? 
Yes. One in one week. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Five more days. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And thank you, Vicki, for um, yes. your work and um, doing everything that you have done. We appreciate it. Okay, we are ready for follow-up old business. Well, we didn't do public commentary. Mm -hmm. Anyone from the public? They're running out Almost the Almost of the public is gone. <laughs> but... Um, <laughs> Corey, you're not going to come and entertain us or anything? No, I'm, I'm, I'm content back here. Okay. <laughs> okay, uh, follow-up, old business. If you recall, at our last work session, we uh, spent some time uh, in small groups uh, working on uh, telling our story. And as a follow-up to that, um, Dr. Borf and um, I believe Vicki assisted on this, putting together a summary of the at least the major comments and um, ideas that came out of um, those um, groups. Um, we've had an opportunity for some brief follow-up to some of the ideas that were shared, uh, one of which <clears throat> was in uh, corporate discussion with the Teachers uh, Association and um, a concept to include a teacher and a student and um, positive um, things that might be going on in the classroom and having um, teachers identify those students in situations and uh, bringing those to uh, our attention and potentially some board meetings and maybe some other opportunities. Um, also, we um, discussed in our cabinet meeting um, some of the things that were shared that evening uh, in a reflection period and uh, began the process with the building principles. So. I think tonight it was to let everybody know that uh, we're trying to keep the ball rolling. And we want to um, have a conversation amongst the board as to what we can do at our board meetings um, to tell our story. And um, we did have a conversation uh, amongst um, the executive committee which um, Aaron and Jeff and, and I, when we meet with Dr. Borf to uh, set the agenda, um, we had a little conversation about what we might do to um, lead this endeavor, I guess, and to um, utilize the time that we have to tell our story. We want it to be efficient and effective um, because sometimes our meetings can be rather lengthy so that's why we we need whatever we do to be very efficient and effective um, one of the things that we did this evening was we we actually moved um, our celebrations up to um, celebrating the joy of learning and um, it doesn't mean that we uh, we can't um, still celebrate because we can as a board but we thought that we needed to have a, a plan and have it to be an organized plan so that we are all on the same page and that we that we know what we're doing um, we talked in our um, amongst us about some different things and you guys help me uh, one of the things we talked about was how could we utilize maybe before uh, our meetings um, instead of starting our meeting at 630 uh, because that's the time that WCTV has a scheduled is 630 how we could do something that is telling our story for about that about three to five minutes so we would we could start our board meetings actually at 635 so that if we have a video or if we have a PowerPoint or if we have something that we want to um, show before the board meeting then uh, that would be a possibility um, we also talked about um, dividing it into <coughs> segments so that we 
we uh, tell our story through our partners and our community, then through our teachers and our students, and we also want to think about our parents, um, how we can also recognize the important work that our parents are doing. And so, um, what else do we talk about, guys? Um, well, I think the, one of the most important things that w we discussed, and I think we'll all still we'll still need to have this discussion is, and it's just like a t how do we organize it and sustain it? Who I mean, it's going to be difficult to have twenty people responsible for it, and not one person responsible for it. So, I guess the the, the biggest question I think that we have to answer as a board is. How do we sustain it? And how do we how do we put the structure in place so so that, that it doesn't just fall apart? Um, I Suzanne, we um, also I wanted to share with you that there was a meeting of the communication committee on the twenty first. Good. Um, it's a fortified group from where uh, it was. Um, some of the best parts and some even better parts. So. Huh. Um, that group also looked at the notes from the discussion and um, are working at a little bit of the structure. I think that group can help us with a little bit of the structure that we're looking for um, and help us gain some of those um, systems, which is what I think we're talking about needing, is creating systems so that it doesn't fall off. Um, and being able to collect the stories to feed the pre-meeting uh, that you're talking about and as well as using some of those collected stories in the um, actual marketing and recruitment efforts that we need to be talking about right now. Um, and so I, I look forward that group's going to meet again in just a couple of weeks. And so I look forward to bringing back their suggestions. There's some very good minds on that group. So without giving away all of our secrets in public, <laughs> we don't want to do that. So. <laughs> Aaron. Well, in the same line with communication and what we're talking about, uh, one thing that I had mentioned uh, last week was that 10 or 15 minute period prior to our meetings, prior to 630, when the public starts to come in. That would be a great time that if we could uh, especially utilize Mr. Russell and his class, uh, Radio TV and or WCTV or even Bridget or, or, or whoever it may be and put together a collage of stories, positive stories, photos tonight. It could have been Denise Elm uh, and it could have been Denise Elm or it could have been the BPA or something and have, have that video footage uh, here playing prior, you know, while the public is waiting on us to come out and start a meeting, we get to tell a positive story, some of the positive things that are going on uh, right now so that they're not just sitting out here waiting, well, you know, looking at their, oh, I didn't realize I left my watch at home. That doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, but, um, you know, being able to do that, it's kind of like when we're sitting at a general session uh, at NSBA and, you know, they're getting ready to do something and they have, mm -hmm. they have the video and you have the voice talking about it and then, you know, everyone gets involved with it that way. I, I just like to add that a lot of this is happening. The collection is happening. It's just that we want to look for more ways to share the stories out. Um, uh, <coughs> while there's definitely room for improvement, um, if you've watched the RCS website mm -hmm. um, and some of the photographs and the Facebook pages and almost all of the schools now have Facebook pages, there's a lot of the sharing happening. So I think it's just really good that we would take a leadership role and say, yes, we agree, this is very important. And, 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 and so I, I'm glad that we're having the conversation so that we can help, we as the leadership board can help fortify the efforts th and support the positive things that are happening and encourage maybe some that aren't quite there yet and aren't thinking that way, encourage them to think that way. Cor yes, I, and I think we all uh, agree that uh, a lot is happening. It just 
seems as though we can be a little more intentional. Absolutely. And a little more organized and planned. I mean, I thought tonight um, we had a great um, session of telling our story. Absolutely. I love the historical perspective of the adult oh, yes. night school. I thought that was um, our adult education. Um, I thought that was yes. that was really um, um, neat, and um, so I, you know, I think that um, that at least we can um, do what we can do here at the board level, mm -hmm. and then hopefully um, at other levels it'll take place. And encourage also. some systems. I, exactly. I really do think that's what we're hungry okay. for. Dixie and well, Nancy. and I was going to say too, not everybody watches these board meetings. Sure. We have 14 people sitting at this table, and if we would each go out and tell five other people totally agree, that we you. have a runner-up teacher of the Absolutely. year in our system this year, that we have an adult education program that just graduated their 3,000th graduate, yeah. that we have a BPA that qualified 25 people for the state um, finals, you know, and on and on and on, uh, the library mm -hmm. grant. The AP. The t AP yes. on Saturday. Mm -hmm. So, and mm -hmm. yes, and the AP classes on Saturday. So if we would go out and tell five other people with 14 people at the table, and they it, will make, an, it will make an impact. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Susie? Well, I just um, wanted to point out, and I maybe even get affirmation from Rob, it seems to me that it, that collecting these uh, visual images or videos of, of stories should be a lot simpler. And maybe I'm just joining the 21st century, but I've been um, FaceTiming and Skyping with grandchildren a lot lately, and it's so easy. Mm -hmm. And um, I would think we could somehow record those, and it'd be so e easy and quick to sit a student in front of a, of a FaceTime and um, record that. and have them make a report about what's going on in their building or their classroom. I'd love, I mean, and I think, I think, uh, I just think that would be awesome. We, we have a lot of content being created right now and it's just getting that into a public forum, mm -hmm. organizing it and getting the system. So, but mm -hmm. we have a lot of that, uh, you know, the multiple Facebook accounts and YouTube channel, you know, we, so it's just getting that formalized, I think, but yeah, it's, mm -hmm. it's so easy. Mm -hmm. to, to take that and so build glad. content. Ooh. <laughs> well, and I'm, I'm just um, really pleased that our, um, that the um, REA is going to partner with us on this to, so that we can um, bring our teachers and students and recognize them for um, their work and uh, we have so many talented, talented staff members and um, we need to showcase them. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, and I think I keep saying the obvious as well as the not so obvious. Mm -hmm. And um, so um, I think that, I think we're beginning. Erin? This is a thought sometime in the future of maybe using FaceTime here at the board level at a board meeting to you know to go and speak live with some of those students or some of those business partners out there who can talk directly to the board and everything else and share that story publicly you know just for a couple of minutes on here I, I I've got a lot to learn about FaceTime and I've yet to be able to do it myself <laughs> you know but I mean imagine <laughs> sitting here and going live to some remote location and speaking with somebody who's directly speaking to the board and reporting to us well this is why I was successful in the classroom or this is how this teacher helped me or this is what my business is doing to support education in Richmond Community Schools something like that just for a couple of minutes and if I can do it you can do it <laughs> <laughs> I also wanted to ask the board because we always have um, a segment of our agenda where we for the celebrations and where we randomly celebrate um, different activities and so oh, yeah. forth that are happening around the corporation. 
um, in our meeting we were talking about what if we, if that were a little more organized. I, I always fear that we have forgotten something. And if we could have that um, um, more organized so that we don't forget anything and that I don't know I don't know what I'm thinking maybe a list or uh, that we can shoot up or that we can read or that we can talk about or so that it's not so random what are your thoughts on that mm -hmm. it's a good idea okay so anybody should the schools just send in possibly their pluses for the that two week period I, I think so that, that we would don't be. miss Suzanne did you, you no I you think that's a, great okay. I mean it's another thing that you're putting on their plate and we're, we're hopeful that they can you know I'm saying I just I don't want to put one more thing for them to do but hopefully well, we can get them to they submit do it. exactly mm -hmm. uh, they do let letters and stuff yeah. exactly because they want people to know absolutely um, you know what's happening and and they want to be celebrated yeah. and our website does a good job of showcasing that yeah. also and our Facebook page. Yeah, we could probably collect it too just from like you said right. just from pulling it yeah. from those places calendars and just different things so okay well be good that would help to make it I a agree. little more efficient also mm -hmm. Uh, from our standpoint and, then and do you want to move that to the beginning <coughs> mm -hmm. okay. if we could just kind of clump that mm -hmm. all together at the beginning and um, you know we we're going to have to be responsible also for making it efficient because so often you know we want to talk with whoever's here and and sometimes it, it takes longer than than what it should and um, because we still have the rest of it. we want to give it uh, obviously ample time mm -hmm. and it is important it is it's all about what what we are about mm -hmm. but we also have the rest of the meeting uh, another thing that we talked about was perhaps <coughs> um, doing this uh, at our business meetings um, so at least to start out once a month mm -hmm. because on our work sessions we're often um, extra in, time yeah in groups and you know doing that kind of thing mm -hmm. but I'm not saying never but at least starting out if we would plan to do that at our business meetings and then we can grow from there um, because obviously if we want to have uh, videos or FaceTime or it's going to have to be planned mm -hmm. uh -huh. and um, so I, I like I'd like I love and we've talked about this before but um, it, and it came up in the communication marketing group uh, the idea of talking points like sharing that out with mm -hmm. all of us and letting us all be the ambassadors that we're meant to be my question for you all is if if you were sent um, the three or four or five whatever it is things that you should share with five friends mm -hmm. um, how <laughs> often would you want that but should that be once a month should that because I mean I'm serious if we say that I would hope I want everyone to be able to do it so if I sent you five things that you should be bragging about Richmond Community Schools over the next month two weeks what do you think two weeks between meetings between. Mm -hmm. so so basically go on the meeting schedule and say here's our talking points from now to the next meeting and you tell two friends and they'll tell two friends you know that kind of thing um, I think that would be awesome to do that and I think we should share it with everyone, everyone in RCS and say you know make a conscious effort to brag about your school so, okay. we kind of talked about that a little bit also in the executive set excuse me in our executive uh, meeting uh -huh. and that was like doing talk those talk right those same yeah we've talked about it multiple points. times we're just Put a on matter of tv and mm -hmm. everything else you know uh, what is happening and what is coming yeah. to you from richmond yeah. community school it's just the power of the human sharing though that i would like to capitalize on that is huge and i know and you all have done it too 
is you get into a group of folks that you know and you spend a little time um, sharing the facts. Like a conversation will come up and you find out that people have sort of most of the information but not all of it and, and you find yourself kind of correcting things and, and, and redirecting the conversation and it's so much more powerful when you get a chance to one-on-one -on -one say, yeah, that's mostly true but did you know the reason why that happened? And that just changes it and now people own the information and so they hear it from Dixie, their teacher who they had you know, for four years, um, they're going to go then, and, sh and, and then she's going to say to them, hey, you know, try to find a couple people this week to share that with. I think exponentially <coughs> that has probably the most chance of be being powerful than any of the video displays and lists and things. We still need to do all those things, but I think the person to person has a real potential. Okay, well, uh, obviously we'll be having more conversations, and um, Suzanne, we look forward to hearing from you to guide the board. Yeah, um, I, think, I think it's, uh, we're, we're really positioned well right now, so. Okay. Okay. Okay, superintendent and board reports, reflections, celebrations. I'll have it on I'd there. like to point out one thing. Um, in our board meeting this evening, we had the artwork from Dennis' students, uh, Mr. Chastain. Awesome. Mm -hmm. um, Again, just, oh gosh, it's uh, so we were admiring it uh, yesterday uh, in the cabinet and coming out and looking at it, and it's just mm -hmm. awesome work. Mm -hmm. uh, the ceramics, the pointillism from oh, students, great. and uh, mm -hmm. the geometry on that is amazing. Nice job. Mm -hmm. I love the eagle up there. I love it. 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 We need to yeah. have a scan. I know <laughs> of that, but That's I don't know that our cameras can do that. But Dixie, yes. oh, and I have one. Dixie. Um, Senator Alan Paul has authored SB three fifty the SB three fifty three bill. It calls for an interim study committee to be formed over the summer, and the purpose would be to study and review the impact of school vouchers on urban schools and their communities. Bob Coddington and Mark Millis uh, testified at the Senate committee today and as a result the committee unanimous, unanimously passed it nice. to move forward to the full Senate. And I That's thank Christy right. Hollis for giving me the information. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes. and I think that um, uh, the board needs to be commended mm -hmm. um, because we are the reason that that bill is to them. Mm -hmm. um, being being placed and um, because we met with Senator Paul and um, yeah. with with representative Dick Ham mm -hmm. and expressed our concerns and spent a lot of time with them mm -hmm. And um, Mr. Paul graciously uh, made this suggestion, and he has followed through. Yep. And um, I thank him for that, and I'm Absolutely. sure we all do. Mm -hmm. um, so um, anyway, the board has spent a lot of time um, advocating for public schools, and um, hopefully something good will come of this. And you guys keep the pressure and on. And thank you, Mr. <laughs> Connington and Mr. Millis. And let us know if you need us to go, too, um, because um, several of us probably would make, if we need to go again, we will. I would do that. Yeah, sure. Senator Paul's staff was, was great. Um, we explained that we had a board meeting tonight, so they moved us from uh, about the sixth uh, report to the first report. Oh, fantastic. And we were able to get in there and do that. And um, really good questions and positive comments um, from the various senators on the committee. Um, so we're we're pleased with how it turned out. Sure. Does Dr. Bork know this yet? Yes, I emailed him. <laughs> <laughs> we should okay. probably celebrate Challenge Day too. I mean, that was uh, that 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 initiative takes a lot of energy and work, and I just appreciate that folks are willing to do that. For what now? Three years? Mm -hmm. Four yes. years? Three. 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 This is the third one. 
Well, and when you hear it referenced by students that they're going to go do other things. Because, yeah, um, I think that's great. I think that's pretty fantastic. Susie. I just wanted to remind the public that our city spelling bee is a week from tomorrow night, January 30th at 6 o'clock over at Charles. And if you've never been to the edge of your seat kind of tension <laughs> that a city spelling bee has, this is a real opportunity and um, I know that it's always fun and um, I hope that people will come because come it's a great, oh, it the kids are working really hard right now practicing and practicing. Wow. School-wide spelling bee, a lot of, I've seen a lot of winners in mm -hmm. different photos. So that's I can't like, even pronounce most of the yeah, words, let alone spell them. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else? Well, I guess we are adjourned.